Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar today, which is today a case study. How J.B. Hunt is driving efficiency with AI and real-time automated data pipelines, sponsored today by Click. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen for that feature. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speakers for today, Newman Fahar, Joe Spinelli, and Ritu Jain. Joe is the Director of Engineering and Technology at J.B. Hunt. He leads the data empowerment organization consisting of the business intelligence, data engineering, and Google Analytics teams. Joe's teams are focused on enabling the entire organization to get the maximum value out of their data data assets. Newman leads the ISV Solutions Architect team at Databricks. With his deep knowledge around data engineering, data science, machine learning, and analytics, Newman helps companies obtain quantifiable business value from their technology investments, including Spark, Hadoop, and other open source technologies. He works closely with Databricks partners to help architect joint solutions and take them to market. Ritu is the Director of Product Marketing at Click. In this role, she is responsible for the go-to-market strategy for Click's data integration portfolio with a specific focus on data lake creation solutions and associated products. Ritu has over 20 years of experience in data management and analytics and led global marketing strategy for multiple industry verticals and solutions at SAS, Alteryx, and Teradata prior to joining Click. And with that, I will turn the webinar over to Ritu to get us started. Hello and welcome. Oh, you're still muted. There we go. I got you. Are you there? We can't. Hi, Richard. Did you mute on your end as well? Can you hear me? We're okay. Yep. Yeah, now we can hear you. We got it. Fantastic. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Shannon, for introducing us. Uh, welcome to our webinar today, where we would be talking with J.B. Hunt on how they are improving their efficiency and customer experience with Click and Databricks technology. In my section, I will be talking about some of the challenges that companies like, the, companies like J.B. Hunt face in terms of getting maximum value out of their data lakes and how Click and Databricks solve for those. So before I do that, let's talk a little bit about who Click is and what we do, especially for those of you who are not very familiar with Click. So Click is a, a data and analytics company with over 50,000 customers worldwide and presence in over 100 countries. We're known as a leader in both data integration and data analytics space. In fact, Gartner, for the 10th year in a row, has awarded us leadership position in their BI and analytics magic quadrant again this year. We're also seeing huge momentum in data integration space with double-digit growth in that market. Gartner very recently named us as the fastest growing vendor in data integration market with over 70% growth year over year. We work with over 1,700 partners globally, both GSIs as well as technology partners like Microsoft, AWS, Databricks, obviously, um, Snowflake, and Google, and more. In terms of what we do, we work with organizations such as JB Hunt to help them turn their data into business value by providing solutions for end-to-end -end value chain, all the way from data to analytics to insights. Our solutions fall in three major categories, data integration, which focuses on turning your raw business data into analytics ready state, data analytics, which focuses on converting that data into actionable insight, and data literacy as a service, which focuses on providing organizations education and consulting support so that they can deploy those insights to drive business value.
I don't think uh, there is any debate anymore on data driving business value. There is enough studies, there are like enough studies, there is enough research that has been done on this topic to show that companies that are using data to drive business decision making tend to outperform their less informed counterparts. But the reality is that most of the companies still are not using their data to the extent that they should be able to use. And we recently did a, a research work with IDC, and some of the findings were quite surprising. One of the things that we found when we were doing this research is that even today, less than 10% of business relevant data is being used by some of these companies for analysis. And of the business executives that were surveyed during this study, only 32% were confident that they can create value from their data. The most surprising to me was uh, the third finding, which was basically a number of business decision makers saying that they still don't have confidence and understanding of their data so that they can deploy it for business decision making. And that's the reality. Most of the organizations, even today, they are struggling to convert the data that they collect into analytics ready state and make it available for their data consumers, let alone derive any business value from it. And if you look at it, it makes sense because when you look at the data to value continuum, there are multiple steps from all the way when you start from accessing and capturing data and storing it into your data lake to consuming that data for taking business decisions so that your business impact can be there. And really the value creation, the maximum value uh, of that data is when you deploy that data to, to drive those decisions. But most of the companies, they, if you talk to them, they are still focused on capturing that data, ingesting that data, and maybe storing that data into the data lake, and not so much into processing that data and getting it into analytics ready state so that they can feed their AI models or they can feed their machine learning models. Or managing and governing that data so that right people have access to that data and their data consumers have that data available to them when they need it in order to take those decisions. We did a webinar uh, in September with Eckerson Group. Uh, it's a group which very much focuses on data management space. And one of the things that we were highlighting during that session was that there are too many companies that get caught up in the front end of the data to value continuum where they are just storing data or capturing and ingesting storing data into data lake. And that is an important step, but that is the first step. Making that data usable and accessible is even more important because that's when your data consumers are able to take that data and convert it into business value. So let's talk about some of the challenges that companies that, uh, you know, like JV Hunt or other large enterprises uh, are facing when it comes to gaining value out of their data. So when you talk about the capture and ingest side, there are challenges around multiple data sources. Most of these companies, some of, most of these companies are pulling data from multiple sources you know, sources that don't talk to each other. And in some of these companies, these sources can run into hundreds. In order to ingest this data, they need to connect to these data sources, and they need to, to be able to set these pipelines. A lot of these times, these data pipelines are being set manually by their data engineers. And therefore, there are errors in the process. There is manual coding happening, so there can be coding errors. Uh, there are challenges around just, you know, the time it takes to, to set up those data pipelines when you're talking about large volumes of data sources. And then there is a challenge around data latency. When you look at your AI models, your machine learning models, when you look at even your real-time operational analytics, you want data to be real-time, up-to-date data to feed these models. But most of the times when you're talking about large volumes of data, the batch mode does not work anymore. 
you want the ability to to load that data in an incremental fashion as the changes are occurring. So that's a big challenge in getting all your data working. The second challenge is around storing and processing that data. So if you look at from the storing and processing perspective, there are obviously challenges around the cost of storage, the flexibility of storage, right? Because you're storing large volumes of data, you're storing different types of data, but then there is challenge around the reliability of that data, right? Is there consistency between what's happening in the source systems versus your target data lake? Is the data consistent? Is the transactional consistency being maintained? Is the, like, are the changes in the data definitions or data structures being, being migrated or propagated to your data lake? Also, there is challenge around the timeliness of analytic readiness, right, of that data. So as you're capturing this data, you need to standardize it, you need to format it, and merge those change data files in order to get that real-time view of the data, the most current view of the data. And a lot of times that work is being done by data engineers or data scientists, and most of the companies don't have an army of data engineers, data scientists. In fact, uh, um, in the Eckerton survey that we did um, in September, one of the things that we found that the data engineering positions are four times as unlikely to get filled as data science positions. So there is a real scarcity of your data engineering resources. And it is just not possible for any company of whichever size and however investment they may have made in their data engineering side of the business for them to be able to process all this data manually by doing hand coding and by uh, hand coding your ETL scripts. The third challenge is around managing and processing these data, right? Most of the companies, they are in a hurry to dump data into their data lake because they want that speed uh, to store that data into that data lake. But what happens in the process that they usually are not generating metadata around that data, they're not common data definitions. So there are no, even though data is coming from multiple sources, you have no common semantics to search with for that data. So data consumers are struggling to find right data from your data lake, business relevant data, combine those data sets and be able to use those data sets. They also don't have the ability to control who has access and who does not have access to this data so there is this whole question about the confidence of that data in that data, which makes the usability of data questionable. And then lastly, from the consumption and analysis perspective, your data consumers want the ability to access all that data themselves and to be able to provision that data because they need data when they need data. But in most of the companies, you're dependent on IT, you're dependent on data scientists or data engineers to provide you access to the right data set, which means by the time you get data, it's already too late, or it is, you know, even the need for analysis has gone past. And that's where Click and Databricks are coming together to provide this end-to-end -end real time data pipeline. And, you know, we'll talk about it from JV Hunt's perspective, but if you look at the overall architecture of the, the joint solution, it really helps you automate that entire end-to-end -end data pipeline. The Click solution for Databricks, it comes with a market-leading change data capture capability, which provides you that universal connectivity, that ability to access and ingest data from virtually any enterprise source, be it a data warehouse, uh, your legacy mainframe systems or your enterprise applications like SAP or Salesforce. It can ingest that data and load that data directly into Delta Lake. And the solution provides for both batch loading of data as well as capturing those incremental changes as they are occurring so that you can convert your slow data into fast data. You can get that near real time latency and then the solution also supports 
source and schema sync. So it basically what it does is any changes that are happening in your data definitions and your data structures in your source system, it propagates those changes into target, into Delta Lake, just so that you have the, the most reliable, the most consistent data at any point. And once the data is loaded into Delta Lake, it also auto generates a SQL code for merging those change deltas so that you can generate that operational view of the data, the most current up to date view of the data by executing that merge code within your Delta engine. And once that operational view of the data is created, you can either feed that operational data directly into your analytical models for real time insight, or you can feed it into your AI and machine learning models that are developed in Databricks to train and score those models. And we talked about this in a resource constraint about data engineers to set up those data pipelines. Click Solution also comes with an interactive interface so that you, your data engineers can in point and click manner set up those data pipelines. They don't need to write any code. They can just in an interactive manner set up those pipelines and then they can monitor and manage those pipelines in an exception based manner without having to deal with, you know, the challenges of managing a lot of pipelines from multiple sources. The solution also comes with a cataloging capability. So we talked about the data consumers having the challenge to be able to search and find that data. Well, the integrated catalog in the solution, it allows you to generate very rich metadata on all the data, not only data that is in the data lake, but across all your source system so that your users, your data consumers can very quickly search for, find and understand that data. It comes with a data marketplace so that they can, in a very online shopping type experience, shop for self-provision that data to get the data subsets ready in the format that they need in order to analyze that data. And the catalog has governance capabilities integrated within it so you can set up access controls. You can set up security features like encryption and obfuscation of data to protect your more sensitive PII data, et cetera. And then the, the whole solution is platform agnostic. So once you have uh, gotten your data in the format that you need, you can actually then either analyze it and click Obviously, you can feed it into Databricks, or you can use any analytical tool of your choice. So let's do a quick recap here in terms of the, the capabilities that we were talking about against the challenges that most of the organizations are facing. So in terms of ingest, the, the universal connectivity and the change data capture capability takes care of some of the challenges that are associated with those heterogeneous data or with the data latency. In terms of storing and processing, the multi-cloud environment, because the solution is platform agnostic, supports multiple clouds, you can choose the best cloud storage that fits your needs. And it also fully automates the entire data pipeline from uh, ingestion, real-time data ingestion, all the way to creating that analytics-ready uh, data so that you can meet those needs for right, real-time data without having to deploy an army of uh, data scientists and data engineers to, to convert that data. And in terms of the change propagation, uh, it provides that reliability, that, you know, that reliable view of the data, the, the transactionally consistent view of the data with asset support through data bricks so that you can use that data with confidence. The management and governance perspective, the catalog provides the metadata, it persists history for end-to-end -end lineage, and it provides the governance features. And then from data consumption perspective, the data marketplace allows the ability to data consumers 
to search, evaluate, and then self-provision that data. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Newman so that he can talk about some of the, the capabilities that Databricks brings to the table. Great, uh, thank you, Ritu. Um, hey everyone, thank you for joining today. I'm Newman Fakhar. I'm the Partner Solutions Architect who's been working with uh, closely with the uh, Click teams to help integrate the two products together. So with that, if you can go to the next slide, please. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what uh, you know, Databricks does as a company and, and kind of where our roots are. Um, and then I'll, I'll then speak to what problems we solve. So our, our aim is really to make, um, to make it easy for customers to become, um, to data driven, data driven companies and data driven organizations. And we do that by bringing together, um, the personas of data engineers, data scientists and analysts together onto a single unified platform that's, uh, cloud native, that is cloud agnostic. Um, that's easy to use and that can scale up to virtually unlimited, um, uh, unlimited scale as the needs of the business grow. Um, we have, uh, over 5,000 customers and, uh, hundreds of partners, including Click being a highly valued, uh, a partner for, um, for the purposes of data ingest and, and BI as well. Um, we are also the company that's behind the popular uh, Apache Spark uh, open source project, which has become the de facto sort of um, data engineering framework uh, in the industry um, and machine learning as well. Um, we'll. I'll speak a little bit more about um, uh, Delta Lake as well in more more detail. We, we're also the creators of Delta, which allows you to build a, build an open uh, cloud native data lake. Um, uh, on, on your cloud of choice. Uh, we are also behind the ML Flow project, uh, which allows customers to manage the machine learning lifecycle as, uh, as Ritu was explaining there. And then more recently, we've, uh, uh, we've brought in Redash into our purview, which is, um, which is essentially a SQL workbench and basic dash, dashboarding, uh, capability to make it easier for SQL oriented personas who are on, uh, who are in the data lake to be able to do SQL workloads very easily on, on Databricks. So uh, next slide, please. So what problems do we, uh, do we solve? There, th as we talk to customers who are trying to do large scale machine learning and, and uh, analytical projects, we found out that really they struggle with four key, four key problems. So one is, you know, the problem that Ritu was describing, right? That the data is, Data tends to be siloed and messy, right? Um, it, it tends to reside in all kinds of places in the org and bringing it out of those silos into a reliable central place to do analytics is, you know, has been a challenge. Um, everybody, number two, everybody wants to do machine learning, right? But, um, because people, you know, companies have realized it gives them an edge, uh, in the market, right? It helps them to build new, build new revenue, new products, um, uh, allows them to become more efficient, but it's hard, right? It's, it's historically been hard. And I'll talk about how we make it easy. Um, on the BI front, yeah, what we're increasingly seeing is that customers who build data lakes want to increasingly do uh, SQL oriented and BI workloads on the entire uh, data lake as opposed to being limited to a fraction of uh, or a subset of the of the lake. And I'll speak uh, speak a little bit about how we're solving that problem. And of course, productionizing it all, which is number four, Right, this has always been hard, and I'll speak a little bit about how we uh, help out there as well. So next slide, please. So coming coming to the problem of um, you know breaking down the silos, this is where uh, you know the click integrations are are absolutely key and critical for us because what we see is that customers have data in various systems, right? Be it relational databases, be it mainframes, be it ERP systems, be it the cloud CRM systems. And to really derive any value in a sort of a 260 oriented way, uh, on those data sets, you know, customers have been asking that, Hey, I want to bring it into a reliable, reliable lake, um, where, where I can do my machine learning and analytical workloads and where I can do it with confidence, right? If you start doing these things at large scale, right? If you imagine that you're ingesting a hundred million records and something goes wrong at the, you know, 50 millionth record. Then how do you number one find out that something went wrong in your ingestion pipeline? And then secondly, how do you, you know, transactionally roll it back to ensure that you don't end up with a half ingested or corrupted data set in your lake and end up reporting on something or doing machine learning on something that's technically not reliable? 
that's where Delta helps, and that's where the integration between Click and Delta, you know, brings that value together for customers to be able to break down those silos, uh, bring bring those data sets in, uh, replicate them in very, very easily via a product that allows them to do so visually, uh, and then be able to trust, more importantly, trust the data that's in the lake so that because, because you know, with machine learning, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If you're the model uh, uh, takes in data that, that, that is not trusted or that is not high quality, then the model will essentially make predictions that are wrong or that are not reliable. So hence, you know, it's absolutely critical um, to, have a reli to have reliable data in the lake. And, and that's where the click uh, integration with Delta is extremely uh, important. And, and then the second aspect of the scaling, uh, when you start doing this at multi, terabyte, tens of ter terabytes or petabyte scale, then your lake has to perform from uh, from uh, an engine perspective. And that's the second aspect of Delta. Delta is not only the open format that allows you to build a transactional lake on cloud storage natively, it's also uh, the engine which allows you to then do queries and do analytical machine learning workloads on that data at scale. Um, next slide, please. Uh, now, once you have the data right inside the lake and you use, uh, you know, click to get it into the lake, uh, the question is, well, I want to do, how do I actually do machine learning, um, right, workloads on this? Historically, we've seen customers complain that, hey, my data engineers who munch the data and my machine learning engineers who actually build the model, they tend to be siloed, right? There tends to be a wall between them. How, how, do, you, how do you bring these two personas together, right? And that's one of the key value props, right, that data brings, brings to the table. Once you have the data in the lake, then the engineers and scientists can work off of uh, the same data sets and iterate together without being siloed. We have really great sharing capabilities built into the platform. And equally importantly, we, we ship all of the major uh, machine learning frameworks that you find in the market. The machine learning market is fairly, from a framework perspective, is fairly fragmented. Everybody has their favorite tool. Some people like Spark and Lib, other people like TensorFlow, some like Scikit-Learn, Keras, PyTorch, and so on. We've packaged all of these frameworks as essentially managed clusters on, on Databricks so that you can use your favorite framework with Delta. It's tightly integrated with Delta, and you can build your model. Not only can you build it, you can track the life cycle of it and the lineage of it, and then also deploy it out at scale. And that entire life cycle is managed by MLflow, which is tightly integrated with the platform and is available as a managed service. So that's how we make machine learning easy. Coming, uh, uh, next slide, please. Coming to the BI aspect, what we've increasingly seen, right, is uh, customers, when they've built these data lakes, uh, they want to do not only machine learning on it, but also uh, SQL-oriented, you know, workloads on it. Analysts want to come in and be able to, you know, do uh, ex uh, exploratory analytics and BI on that, on that data. Um, and, uh, you know, instead of always having to move a uh, curated piece of that data from the lake into a warehouse, customers have been saying that, hey, why, why don't you allow me to have first-class SQL experience on the lake itself? And, and uh, part of that strategy, right, is uh, our, what we are calling our lake house pattern, where we're investing in uh, essentially cluster types and engines that will make it make SQL an absolute, from a BI perspective, an absolute first-class citizen uh, in the lake. And we are also working very closely with with our BI partners like Click uh, to ensure that the SQL or analyst-oriented persona can have a great BI experience on the lake itself, and not hence be limited to a fraction of data data, but on you know be able to do BI on the entire lake. Um, you will see announcements come out uh, this month specifically targeted targeted towards uh, towards this persona. Um, uh, moving on to the next slide, um, and of course, productionizing it all <laughs> is always a challenge, right? Uh, uh, the cloud gives immense power, immense compute, storage, network power. It's virtually unlimited, uh, regardless of which cloud you're on, AWS, Azure. Um, and the question is, how do you productionize, you know, these workloads on the underlying cloud? How do you ensure that they're secure? How do you how do you take advantage of the elasticity of the cloud without having to become a DevOps tool? Right, and that's part of what uh, Databricks, a very key part of what Databricks brings to the table because we abstract out all of those cloud concepts, the notion of deriving compute capacity from the cloud uh, or storage capacity or network capacity, and just we just abstract all of, all of that out and run it for you 
so you can focus uh, really on your analytical and machine learning you know needs and we focus on scaling out the underlying you know system for you and and we won't force you to become a devops guru a big data devops guru just for the sake of doing um, machine learning or analytical work uh, you know workloads on the underlying cloud um, so next slide please so kind of bringing it all together the key thing to keep in mind right starting at the bottom um, the the value of delta right is is that we you you remain in full ownership of your data Delta as a format is 100% open, and and these uh, your Delta Lake uh, uh, data sets reside in your cloud storage, your S3 account or your ADLS or, or Blob account on, on Azure, um, and it is transactional, so it allows you to do data engineering in a transactional manner at scale, and hence the data can be trusted um, at, at at very large scale. Um, and it also comes with the high performance and engine, which acts on that, uh, on those data sets natively on cloud storage. So your analytical data engineering machine learning workloads can scale out to virtually unlimited, right, unlimited levels. And that engine then serves the personas at the top, whether you're an analyst, whether you're a data engineer or a data scientist, you can derive value uh, in an abstracted way from all of the power that's underneath the covers and, and focus on your, on your use cases um, you know, in, in, in a reliable way. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it off to Joe, who will speak about how how uh, JB Hunt is using the two the two products together. Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, can, is my screen okay? Okay. So um, my name is uh, Joe Spinelli, uh, Director of Data Empowerment at JB Hunt. I came to JB Hunt last year and um, I lead the BI, data engineering, and uh, Google Analytics organizations. Uh, before that, I spent 10 years at Temper Sealy uh, in uh, ERP implementations, business intelligence, and data management. Uh, before that, I was uh, 14 years at Toyota Motor Manufacturing, uh, where I work primarily in uh, supply chain systems. Uh, so long, long uh, history of, of supply chain and IT systems here. Um, just a disclaimer, um, I'm not a professional spokesperson. I don't represent the company, so don't go, these are just my opinions, don't go buy or sell stock. I'm not qualified to, to make any forward-looking statements. Uh, I'm only really qualified to tell you about the, the great experience I've had. Um, here at J.B. Hunt, I'm also uh, qualified to tell you uh, about my amazing uh, chocolate cake recipe, uh, but I don't think you tuned in for that, so we'll just kind of stick to the tech. Um, thank you all for coming today. Uh, really, I'm here to, to kind of help uh, those of you who are trying to see if these can, technologies can um, potentially help you with the challenges you're facing. Uh, I've likely been in your position looking for uh, solutions, and so, Really, I just kind of want to give back a little bit and, and show how this has helped me and how it could potentially help you or at least uh, kind of feed your thoughts as you're, as you're working through these problems. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with J.B. Hunt, we are a transportation logistics company, and our mission is to create the most efficient transportation network in North America. And we do have service offerings, including transportation of full truckload containerizable freight, uh, we also have arrangements with most of the major North American rail carriers to transport truckload freight in containers and trailers. And, and really our ability to offer multiple services, including all of our four business seg segments and a full complement of logistics services through third parties, that, that's what gives us our competitive advantage. But as you can imagine, having that large and diverse business comes with a lot of data needs. And so let me dive into uh, some of the things that we needed here at J.B. Hunt, and um, some of these things will likely be very similar to the things that, that you're seeing at your organizations. And uh, we can talk about how we use Click and Databricks to, to help bridge these, uh, bridge these needs and these gaps. So as you're looking through uh, this slide right here, um, you'll see several of the things that, are, that were uh, mentioned before, but you'll also see some other things. Um, data science, of course, is um, is a is a key uh, department at JB Hunt, where where we do have uh, 
uh, data scientists who are who are working to create uh, machine learning and AI, uh, working on those models to to help drive business value, and uh, they swear up and down by by Databricks. I think if I tried to take Databricks away from them, um, that would cause a revolt. Uh, so so for that for that reason alone, I would say um, you've got. Uh, You've got a lot of very happy data scientists who use who use Databricks, and and so we found that not only does it really help um, speed their ability to create uh, and train models, but but Databricks also helps uh, solve a number of other use cases that we have as well. So as you look across the the top, you'll see EDI asset telemetry and analytics. So EDI, most of you are familiar with uh, uh, that kind of format where, where the, that data is coming in, um, usually in a streaming format. And, and um, for, for most people who are using EDI, that's, that's just sort of coming in and, and going into a, a system and then being processed by that system. But the, the other thing that, that we found is we have such a volume of EDI uh, that we really needed visibility into the problems um, that were happening. So if we expected to receive EDI and didn't receive it, or if there were problems with the transmission, uh, we, we need to be able to kind of look into that quickly and, and identify those things quickly and, and be able to respond to it. Um, and that's where Databricks comes in, uh, and it, it allows us to, to pull that data in um, and, and to from that unstructured table uh, to be able to draw um, structured information out of it and provide that on dashboards uh, to folks so that they can see in near real time what's going on. And so I, I point that out in that in a, in a lot of solutions that are out there, uh, they're, they're purely structured data and you'll get um, needs for unstructured data. EDI is a good example of that. Asset telemetry is another good example of that. For, for us, for our business, um, we, we get uh, telemetry data off of our assets, our trailers and things like that, that come in. And this is raw uh, data coming in out of an event hub that, that comes in and lands in Databricks that we're able to basically immediately plot and use either in reports or in visuals. Um, and we're able to do that thanks to Databricks. So, um, when 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 you have needs that include both structured data and unstructured data, that's been one of the key things that we've found with Databricks is that it, it can handle both. Um, and and not all the solutions out there on the market can. So so when you're when you're picking a solution, keep that in mind. Um, another thing, of course, the analytics. Uh, we we have a real need for real time analytics. I'll, I'll talk about that in detail in some of the upcoming slides, um, as well as the ability for applications to, um, um, to get information uh, on what's happening inside the database without necessarily putting additional load on the production database. So this is where uh, that, that particular use case is where Click came to the rescue, and we'll talk about how that architecture um, works. And, and how we solve that use case as well. And of course, there's much, much more. So, so these are, these are probably the biggest cases that you've seen. Um, I'm sure if you're thinking about, you know, what, how, if I had real time data available or near real time data available, if it could be, you know, all the structured formats that I've got, if it could be all the unstructured formats that I got, what could I do with it? Um, and as you can imagine, that's just incredibly powerful. Let me go to the next slide here. Uh, in talking about data science um, uh, in particular, this, this kind of speaks to why we created a cloud data lake to begin with. So, so when, when, you're, when you're working on data science and you're trying to create uh, ML code, the, the ML code itself is not really the issue. Um, the, when, when, it, when it comes to creating that system, getting everything stood up, um, really getting the code stood up is not 
the hardest part. It's everything around it. So collecting the data, verifying the data, um, managing the machines, the infrastructure, the tools, things like that. So just, just as Newman kind of uh, said in his segment, where they, they abstract a lot of that out for you, um, that's exactly what happens with Databricks. And, and I led, that is what led to us going to a cloud data lake is that we, we wanted to get to value quickly. We wanted to be able to get our data scientists uh, into a system creating value quickly. And we really didn't want to build um, all the infrastructure that was needed around this. And that's, and that's uh, again, where Databricks came in and, and really uh, provided what was needed there. Um, and, and so the, the other part of that equation, of course, is click, and I'll talk to that now. Um, so, so how do we, okay, so we, we know that, that Databricks can offer structured and unstructured data, but how do we get it in there? So the, the first step to that is having ingestion flexibility. So, so it's good to have a cloud data lake for, for things like data science or solving multiple use cases, but you have to get the data in there to begin with. And so in our case, we had data in IBM DB2 mainframe. We had it in SQL Server. Uh, of course, we had the IoT data, like the telemetry, EDI data, numbers of and types of sources that, that had to do it. And so and Click, uh, we found, ha had one of the most um, flexible and diverse set of ingestion capabilities, as well as the ability to um, do this in Databricks in, in very good time, right? So, so when, when, uh, when we wanted to get that data ingested in, one of the keys is it, it couldn't take forever to come in. Uh, it had to come in right away. And so that's where um, Click came in uh, to help us out is that we, we were able to get uh, the lion's share of our, of our data into that lake with uh, near real time uh, results. And so that, that's why the combination of the two has is, is been really fantastic for us. Uh, in terms of the repository, uh, again, you have to have that flexibility as well. You have to be able to, um, in our case, uh, store blob data, event hub data, uh, really all types of unstructured data, as well as all your traditional structured data that, that has to be supported. And so when you're looking at the type of, you know, big data or cloud data like solution that you need to do, flexibility is key. Um, if you're limited to one or the other, you'll, you'll find yourself uh, potentially cobbling together uh, solutions uh, from, a, from a number of sources. And, and we really wanted to keep that to a minimum. We wanted to keep the number of of technologies that we're using to a minimum and, and to use best in breed and best in class. And so, and that's where Databricks came in. So from there, um, we needed automation. So as, as Ridu talked about earlier, um, we, we, we didn't have the ability to just infinitely augment our staff to, to take on this project. Uh, and do this, and, and I suspect that most of you do not as well. Uh, so really it became vitally important for us to do this in a way that was very light um, and very easy for our staff to do. And so Click Replicate um, is that tool that allowed us to, to ingest and replicate all those sorts of data into Databricks um, and do it in a way that that was very efficient for our team. Um, so, so you know, the the other way to do it, which you're probably familiar with, is to try and build all that ATL. Um, it, it, I wish I wish these tools had existed throughout my career; <laughs> it would have saved me a ton of time. Uh, unfortunately, they did not. But but we've got them now, and so we're using them, and and it's driving our our time to value. Uh, monitoring was another key component, uh, again, kind of going back to that issue of, of, of staffing. Um, we, we really didn't have uh, the ability to build up 
a, a huge monitoring staff around um, around these processes. We needed to be able to go in and easily see uh, what was happening with our with our ingestion, with our repository, and these tools allow us to do that. So um, it, it's very quick, it's very easy using the dashboards that are available to, to see what's going on, to find and flag problems and get them addressed. Um, kind of moving down to here, uh, this chart is probably um, painfully familiar to a lot of you. Uh, so I won't spend a lot of time on this in, in that this is kind of the uh, simplified version of the old way of doing things, uh, the legacy way, which is very, very similar to many uh, uh, corporations, companies that, I, that I'm familiar with, where, where you've got all of your operational apps and, and things like that operating um, happily in the production space. Uh, you've got uh, jobs that ETL jobs that bring them into a staging area, and from there reloaded into a reporting warehouse, where then where then you can visualize it out to to those folks who need data insights. And so this is your traditional bolt-on reporting uh, mechanism. As you can see in sort of that the left center portion, you've got uh, a lot of time taken in the process getting it from from where a transaction happens to when it's able to be reported on. Um, this is probably painfully familiar to, to many of you uh, as it has been to me. It's, it's very time intensive, uh, extremely manual, takes a lot of work to do it, um, and, and frankly just didn't work, right? So um, not the way we really needed it to. So this is kind of a simplified uh, diagram of how things are happening uh, in our future state, in our current state. Um, so here we have a number of, of types of data sources here on the left that, that I've mentioned before from, from your, your ping data, your asset telemetry, um, your, your SQL servers that are uh, uh, in, in a PaaS state, like your, your dynamics or, or things like that, as well as your on-prem operational DBs, which are, which are all structured. So we use Click uh, Replicate for the vast uh, lion's share of everything that, that we do, and that, that puts things into both uh, Databricks here as well as, our, as well as our hyperscale data store. Um, and what that allows us to do is to, of course, then if you read left to right here on the Databricks section, it, it allows us to, to take that raw data and to make it available for both the, the data scientists up here on top, as well as um, data insights users down here on the bottom. So when, when you talk about um, the, the major use cases for Databricks, um, by and large, we're using it for, for data science and for analytics. And, and because of the, the real-time nature of Click Replicate and because of the, the open source structure of, of Databricks, we're able to make that data available extremely quickly. So the ingestion process probably takes one to two minutes. So there's, a, there's about a one to two minute lag between when things happen in production and when we're able to visualize them in the data lake. Um, and that's fast. And so from there, it can then be uh, used in any, um, in any data models or in any uh, reporting that you have. Um, so that, that of course, um, kind of speaks to the efficiency of the whole thing. So if you can, if you can imagine, we're, we're, we're not adding tons of staff. We're putting this in place. We're getting that value out. And, and, and we're doing it without having to build a ton of infrastructure. Um, so, so that's really kind of our time to value. Uh, of course, the results continuously update. There's, there's really only a minute or two lag between when it happens in, in the transaction and when we uh, see it here in the lake to be used. Um, the automation is, um, it's highly automated. It really doesn't take uh, tons of people doing tons of ETL to do, and it's secured. 
So um, from there, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it back to Ritu for her, for her comments. Thank you, Joe. This was very helpful. Uh, one thing that you saw in uh, Joe's slide that he was sharing in the previous slide, and he was talking about Joe, can you go back to the slide? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, the, the share came off of mine. Hold on. Yep. Just go to the next slide, please. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. So one thing that Joe was showing in that previous slide is that how they have a data lake uh, with Databricks, but they also have a cloud data warehouse, which is where they are um, sending data for more traditional BI type reporting, right? So, and that's that's the reality in most of the organizations at this point, uh, especially the larger organizations, the size of JV Hunt and more. Uh, Companies have multiple architectures. They have a cloud data warehouse, they have data lake, they are also streaming data uh, to their applications so that they can do real time analysis with those and uh, reach out to their customers or do you know operational decisions based on that insight very quickly. And today when we were talking about it, I focused mostly on the managed data lake creation aspect of it with Databricks, but that said, we do support those different architectures. So we do, uh, if you have a cloud data warehouse, we do automate data and the creation of that data warehouse so that you can have that uh, low latency real time view of your data within your data warehouse. We also stream data to whichever uh, application or uh, you know, service that you prescribe to so that we can actually feed those applications for that real-time data. Joe, can you move to the next slide? Sure. So the last point I wanted to make in this particular deck and in this presentation was there are uh, you know, five key principles that I consider when it comes to getting performance data lakes or getting the most value out of your data lake data, and those are, um, you know, listed here. I'll just go quickly over these. You need to accelerate your data delivery into your AI models, into your machine learning or your real time analytics. Uh, the need for information and for responsiveness is so great that you can't afford to do batch uploads. You need that change data capture ability to convert these slow data into fast data. So definitely focus on uh, accelerating data delivery, make sure that that is there. Automation kind of goes hand in hand with that. You, you cannot accelerate the delivery of your data to your analytic models unless you automate your data pipeline all the way from ingestion to creation of that analytics ready data. So make sure that you invest in automation because no, um, no number of uh, data science resources or data engineering resources you may have can take care of those automation needs and allow you to, to leverage all your data within your data lake without that. The catalog is critical because you, your data consumers, they need to understand the data that is in the data lake. They need to find that data. They need to be able to, to trust that data and catalog provides you that capability. You also need to make sure that your data consumers have the ability to curate that data themselves. They have the ability to prepare and self-provision that data themselves. So having a capability around data marketplace is extremely critical because then not only can they use the metadata to search and find data, but they can also use uh, data marketplace to shop for that data, to prepare that data, and to get it into the data sets that they need. And then future-proof, um, Joe was talking about the flexibility, right? So 
you you're more than likely going to add more data sources there are going to be new types of data that you want to ingest into your data lake you want a solution that can accommodate for those kinds of uh, changes in future it, you want a solution that is platform independent that can allow you to to deal with the changes that may come either from mergers acquisitions or just change in your technical direction right so so make sure that when you're looking for a solution you look for something which has that platform independence, that universal connectivity type of capability, so that it can adapt to those changing data architecture requirements. So those are my five key takeaways. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. On this slide, I don't have anything to say. The only point I would say is we have a happy customer. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We're happy to help. Uh, that said, I'm going to open it for questions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Shannon, can you make sure that people are unmuted? Oh, we, we don't unmute, but uh, thank you so much for this great presentation. And just to answer the most uh, commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email to all registrants by end of day Thursday with links to the slides and links to the recording of this session. And if you have questions for our panelists, feel free to submit in the bottom right-hand corner in the Q&A section. So diving in here, uh, does Azure uh, Databricks support Windows standalone Kafka streaming clusters? You mean I turn that over to you? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, yes, I was, I was muted. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I think the, uh, the question was Kafka, right? Uh, do, do we, do we support connecting to Kafka clusters? Yes, absolutely we do. Um, we, we ship with a Kafka connector for Spark inside the, uh, Azure Databricks platform and that can connect to any Kafka endpoint as long as there's network connectivity between the Databricks uh, cluster and that Kafka endpoint. I love it. So, um, question about slides about the architecture in slide 22. Uh, Joe, I know you have controls of the slides currently. Uh, if you can share, why not have the Databricks stream processors that write to bronze, silver, gold be arranged um, serially between them and writing in parallel to the data stores? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Why, why can we, why are we processing them into bronze? Bronze, silver, gold to be arranged serially, yeah, between them and writing in parallel to the data stores. Why do you have, why do you have uh, Databricks processing there? Um, so, so in this case, this is, um, so an example of this type of thing is EDI. Um, so, so in this case, we have, we bring the raw JSON data into the, the raw, um, into the raw, the bronze layer. And, but we're not, we're not, com we're not composing uh, every bit of that EDI necessarily. So, so a lot of times EDI will have ir irrelevant information. And so the, the processing that happens inside of Databricks in that case is, is just really pulling the data that we sort of uh, uh, need for our company and kind of leaving the rest out. Newman, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, one of the reference architectures we have for Delta. So the whole raw, uh, you know, bronze, uh, silver, gold pipeline concept, because, you know, as, as Joe was saying, um, there's a good chance that the data that as it lands, right, for the first time into your lake is probably will need to be massaged, right? Um, and kind of, you know, aggregated and cleaned up. For ultimate downstream use cases such as machine learning or, or, you know, BI analytics. And hence, it's very, very common for us to see customers take, you know, uh, essentially build a pipeline that reads from sort of the raw landing zone and then massages the data into further downstream zones for, you know, uh, uh downstream use cases. Yeah. That, that's not right, something you, sorry. It's not something you necessarily have to do, right? So you've got the flexibility to land it. In the in the zone that you need to land it in, and then go from there. Um, so, this, to take this as sort of a representation of the types of things you can do. Yeah. 
And I'm going to slip in one more quick question here. Uh, any specific reason to use click replication instead of open source uh, connectors, which can uh, stream CDC data via Kafka? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, for, from my perspective, okay. yeah, from my perspective, yeah, because we, we, we wanted one tool uh, that in an automated way did the, the lion's share of our of our work for us. I mean, we could, of course, try and cobble together open source tools to to make the same thing happen. But but again, it kind of, it comes down to how many people do you have to do this? How much time do you have to do this? If you don't have, uh, if if you have the staff and the time to do it, I suppose you could do that. Uh, for us, that really wasn't where the value was. The the value in us was you know getting a a, a proven solution that could get this in near real time into into our lake and do the lion's share of our work and and have that monitoring in place and so so for us that's where the value was i'm sorry rita go ahead no you answered it perfectly i love it well again thank you all for this fabulous case study it's been very insightful and helpful to and thanks to all of our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do but i'm afraid that is all the time we have for this webinar uh, again, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email to all registrants by end of day Thursday with links to the slides and the recording. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Clicks for sponsoring today's webinar. And enjoy. Stay safe out there. Thanks, guys.